How's it going guys? Today I have a unique video for you that's literally been months in the making. I even had to ask a friend to help me collect all this data and crunch all these numbers because the task was quite daunting, even with the help. So basically, a couple months ago, I made a video called The Issue with Longevity. And in that video, I explained that longevity is a great thing, but in many cases, it can be somewhat misleading when players who played for 20 seasons have greater all-time numbers than players who played for 12 seasons. I break down a lot of the different factors and examples in that video, but the video ultimately raises a question. If longevity wasn't a factor in how we compare the all-time greats, then who would be the best? Who was the best when they were at their best? That's where this video comes in. What if every player had a 10-year career? I've taken numbers from nearly 100 of the greatest players of all time. Then I've taken their best 10-year stretch of their career and found out their averages, totals, and accolades over that 10-year period. I'm calling these 10YR stats, so they'll be quick and easy for us to reference. It's important to note that within each player's best 10-year stretch, there will be seasons I will skip and not include because they're injury-laden seasons. I've boiled that down to any seasons where the player played less than 50 games. No ifs, ands, or buts. Seasons with less than 50 games played will not count, regardless of the reason or the circumstance. That only seems fair to all the players involved. The season before or after the disqualified season will be counted instead. So just to be clear, everyone still has 10 seasons. Now before I get into the comparisons and the meat of this video, please understand. This is meant to be a fun exercise, and to give us a different perspective than we normally get. With that being said, these 10YR stats are not perfect in every circumstance. There are so many variables that some people might question, like why do I use 10-year stats instead of 7-year stats or even instead of 5-year stats? Which specific 10 seasons do I use? I might disagree with someone else on what the best 10 season stretch was from a certain player. Also, what era did these 10 years take place in, and is it fair to compare those 10 years to another player from another era? As you can see, I just gave a few examples of how there are so many different variables and how we interpret these statistics. So again, this isn't meant to be a be-all, end-all argument for determining who the greatest players are. It's simply intended to give us another perspective and more context to add to the discussion. What you do with this new information is up to you. Also, if you want to reference all of these stats, I'll have them posted in a link in the video description and in the pinned comment. So without further ado, let's get into it. Three things I want to look at. First is how all-time lists change in their rankings when we're using 10YR stats. Second is which players stand out and appear even more impressive with these new stats. Third, we'll compare the GOAT candidates with our new statistics and see if it changes the way we rank them. So first off, the all-time lists. Currently the top 10 on the all-time scoring list looks like this. Kareem is on top, followed by Malone, LeBron, Kobe, and Jordan round out the top 5. Then you have Dirk, Wilt, Shaq, Moses Malone, and Elvin Hayes. The 10YR stats change up the list quite a bit. As I suspected, now Wilt Chamberlain becomes the all-time leading scorer instead of Kareem. Closely behind Wilt is none other than Michael Jordan. Then you have Karl Malone, Kareem, and Oscar Robertson to round out the top 5. Then George Gervin, The Black Mamba, Dominique Wilkins, Alex English, and Kevin Durant. Several things to note here. Currently, Wilt and Jordan are the only players in NBA history to average over 30 points per game over the course of their career. The 10YR stats don't change that, as Wilt averaged 34.4 points over his 10 years, and MJ averaged 32.1. Kobe drops out of the top 5, and LeBron, Dirk, and Shaq drop out of the top 10. Oscar goes from outside of the top 10 to the 5th spot, and great overlooked scorers like George Gervin, Dominique Wilkins, and Alex English now crack the top 10 and get the recognition they deserve. Kevin Durant is the only current player to crack the new top 10 list, which is an incredible testament to his scoring prowess. I also would like to point out that these are James Harden's 10YR numbers, but it's important to remember that he's only played 11 seasons in the league in total, and in the first few years of this stretch, he was simply a sixth man for the OKC Thunder. If he keeps up his elite scoring, which in all likelihood he will, in a few years, his 10YR stats will be absolutely monstrous. What about the facilitators? Well, the current top 5 assist list looks like this. John Stockton is on top, followed by Jason Kidd, Steve Nash, Mark Jackson, and Magic Johnson at 5th. The 10YR stats change up this list a little bit, but not completely. Despite his long career, John Stockton is still the all-time leader in assists on this new list. 
Magic is second, and the gap between Magic and the rest is pretty substantial. Oscar Robertson comes in at third, then the OG Isaiah Thomas, and then Steve Nash. It's nice to see Isaiah on this new list. He didn't have a very long career, so normally he doesn't show up on many of the regular all-time lists, but he was one of the most incredible blends of lethal scoring and remarkable playmaking. Another huge observation here is Oscar Robertson. We all knew he was good, but statistically, he's an absolute monster beyond what most people realize. He's third on the 10YR assist list, but remember, he's also fifth all-time on the 10YR scoring list. He's the only player to make the top five on both the scoring list and the assist list. But wait, he gets even more impressive. We all know the Big O was the first player to ever average a triple-double over the course of a season when he did it in 1962. Since then, Russell Westbrook did it, and he did it three straight seasons. So with that being said, many would likely recognize Russell Westbrook as the new king of the triple-double. The thing about Oscar is he had many seasons where he was very close to averaging a triple-double. Oscar's 10-year stats have him averaging an insane 29.3 points, 10.3 assists, and 8.5 rebounds on 49% shooting. Not only did he average a triple-double in 1962, but he nearly averaged a triple-double for a decade straight. These are Westbrook's 10YR numbers, and they're not even close. I get that it was a different era, but the gap is still quite surprising. So let's get back on track. What about the all-time rebounders? The actual current top five list is led by Wilt Chamberlain, Bill Russell, Kareem, Elvin Hayes, and then Moses Malone. That's a list made up of some pretty old school players. But the crazy thing is, when you look at the 10YR list, it gets even more old school. Wilt Chamberlain and Bill Russell are still at the very top, followed by Jerry Lucas, Nate Thurman, and Elvin Hayes. All incredible Hall of Fame players that are worthy of being on the all-time list. But there's a theme here that's important to note. Every single one of these players spent at least some time playing basketball in the 1960s. When it comes to rebounding in the 1960s and early 70s, that's the most inflated statistical era we're addressing in this video, and there's a couple reasons for this. For one, the pace of play was much faster in the 60s, which means more possessions, which equals more shot attempts, which also means more opportunities to get rebounds. The other huge contributing factor was the fact that the league, by and large, was not nearly as efficient shooting the basketball. Today, teams are shooting about 46% from the field. In the 80s, they shot generally around 48% from the field, and in the 60s, it got as low as 41% from the field. Faster play, more shots, and less makes is a recipe for a huge rebounding advantage for 60s players. And maybe you're asking, just how big is this gap exactly? Well, this modern year in the NBA, teams are averaging a total of 44.9 rebounds a game. 60 years ago, they were averaging 73.5. Now, I'm not saying that these players from the 60s are not great athletes and not all-time great rebounders, because they absolutely are. But what I'm saying is that there is legitimate influence as to why the top of this list is only represented by that era. If you want to find the greatest rebounders outside of the 60s, it's Kareem Abdul-Jabbar on top, Moses Malone second, Dave Cowens, Dwight Howard, and then Kevin Garnett. Some of you are probably asking, where is Dennis Rodman? Well, the truth is, his elite rebounding numbers were a little short-lived compared to many other greats. Plus, he had several seasons where his averages were high, but he didn't play at least 50 games in those seasons. If this video was about the best five-year stretch, then Rodman would certainly be right around the top of that list, regardless of era. Moving on now, the current all-time steals list is Stockton, Kidd, Jordan, Gary Payton, and Maurice Cheeks. It gets a little weird with the 10YR list. Alvin Robertson all of a sudden crashes the list and takes the number one spot, but I shouldn't act all that surprised. He's a bit of a forgotten star who won a Defensive Player of the Year award in 1986, which is a very rare accomplishment for a shooting guard. Stockton holds it down at 2, Jordan at 3, and then Mookie Blaylock and Maurice Cheeks round out the top 5. Lastly, for the all-time list portion of this video, let's look at the greatest rim protectors. The current all-time blocks list is unsurprisingly led by Hakeem Olajuwon, followed by Dikembe Mutombo, then Kareem, then 7'4'' Mark Eaton, and then Tim Duncan. 
Another thing that's important to note is that blocks and steals were not recorded until the 1974 season, which means guys like Wilt Chamberlain and Bill Russell are not applicable to the list, which is a bummer because they definitely would be in the mix. Now the list does not change a ton when it becomes a 10YR list. Hakeem and Dikembe are still the top two, but now David Robinson joins at number three. Kareem drops to four and Patrick Ewing comes in at five. Here's a key note here for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He was in the league for four whole seasons before the NBA started recording blocked shots, and two of those years were MVP seasons. So not only should he be number one on the regular all-time list in blocked shots, but had blocks been recorded throughout his career, he would possibly be number one on the 10YR list as well. So now that we've covered the all-time lists of the five major statistical categories, I want to use this portion of the video to point out some guys who really stand out with their new 10YR stats. First off, let's bring up the stat line for reference. These are the stats from Tim Duncan's 2003 MVP campaign. He's the player that most people consider as the greatest power forward of all time, and this was in the prime of his career in an MVP season. With that being said, these are the 10YR numbers of Charles Barkley. Although Duncan's MVP numbers were impressive, Barkley had numbers that were just as good, if not better, for a decade straight. In no way am I saying this to take anything away from Duncan, he was awesome. But I am saying this to point out that Charles Barkley was significantly more dominant for a while than many people realize. Here's a few others of the most underrated legends of all time. How about Bob Pettit of the St. Louis Hawks? This is what happens when you're a dominant big man who plays in the same era as Bill Russell and Wilt Chamberlain. Despite your dominant play and incredible statistical accomplishments, you still get overshadowed by bigger names. How about Moses Malone? In my opinion, he's certainly the most underrated center of all time. He's an NBA champion, a 13-time All-Star, a 3-time MVP, an all-time great scorer, and an all-time great rebounder who put up 1960s rebounding numbers in the 1980s. He'll definitely get his own solo video down the road, but in the meantime, hopefully the shout-out of his monstrous 10YR numbers gives him a little bit more of the credit he deserves. How about Mr. Inside and Mr. Outside, Elgin Baylor and Jerry West, two old-school Laker legends, whose talent really gets highlighted with these new numbers. Elgin was a unique combination of finesse and power that led him to achieve strong numbers in rebounding and scoring, despite being only 6 foot 5 inches tall. Jerry West, on the other hand, was a dynamic sharpshooter who scored nearly 30 points per game for a decade straight. Wilt Chamberlain, Michael Jordan, and Oscar Robertson are the only three players who average more points per game in their 10 years than Jerry West did. Again, if there's any legend whose numbers you want to look at, I'll have them posted in a link in the video description and in the pinned comment. Now lastly, to wrap up this video, let's take a look at the GOAT candidates 10YR numbers and accolades. I have my own opinion of who the GOAT is, but I can make an argument for 9 different players. And I actually did. If you're interested, you can check out my GOAT series where I made a video for each of these players. My 9 GOAT candidates are Will Chamberlain, Bill Russell, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, Tim Duncan, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and Michael Jordan. Now let me be clear, I'm going to compare their 10YR numbers based on their best 10 statistical seasons, meaning the accolades achieved outside of those 10 years won't count. So for example, Kareem's championships in his 40s when he averaged under 20 points a game won't count among his accolades because they weren't within his 10 best statistical seasons. So now I'm putting up each GOAT candidate's numbers, and any numbers highlighted green means that this stat ranks as the best among the GOAT candidates. They're going quickly, so feel free to pause the video if you want to see any of these accomplishments for an extended period of time. So once again, the question is, who was the best when they were at their best? Well, based on this somewhat janky, really specific, 10YR stat that I pretty much made up, Michael Jordan has the most green achievements. According to this measurement, MJ clearly has the best and well-rounded 10YR resume. I put an asterisk by Wilt, Russell, and Kareem, because technically if blocks, steals, and defensive awards had all been available during all those years, they could have had even more green achievements. But it's also important to note that if any of these three asterisk players won all of these missing achievements, that player would still be short of Jordan's total. Again, there are so many different ways to evaluate a player's greatness, and this is just one of them. 
Let me know in the comments section which aspect sticks out to you guys, and if you would be interested in a future 5 year video. Shout out to my friend Lizzie for helping me collect all this data, it was quite a task. Thanks for watching as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.